Hi Primary 2-3, it's Mrs Patterson here and I'm here to read you chapter 2 of our novel Fantastic Mr Fox by Roald Dahl. Before we read chapter 2, let's just remind ourselves of chapter 1, which was the three farmers and this is what we read last week. So the three farmers chapter tells us all about three of the main characters in the story, Farmer Bogus, Farmer Boots, and Farmer Bean. So we le learned that these farmers were nasty men, all different in looks and having different farms, but all of them were equally mean. Before you heard me reading this chapter last week, you all took part in some prediction work. So I asked you to think about what you could use to make predictions about the story before you started reading. So before we even read anything inside the book, I asked you to have a look at the title, Fantastic Mr. Fox. What does that tell us about the story? I asked you to have a look at the blurb on the back of the book, which gives us some more clues about what might happen in the story. And also thinking about what you already know to make those predictions, because if you already know a little bit about Roald Dahl, you might know what the story might be like. So some of you guessed that the poor Mr. Fox might be captured and that the farmers were going to get up to something very, very mean. So as we go forward and carry on reading the story, I want you to keep making predictions, keep thinking about what's going to happen next and use the clues from the text to help you make those predictions. Mr. Fox. On a hill above the valley, there was a wood. In the wood, there was a huge tree. Under the tree, there was a hole. In the hole lived Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox and their four small foxes. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plump chicken from Bogus, a duck or a goose from Boots, or a nice turkey from Bean? And when Mrs. Fox had told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of the night and help himself. Bogus and Bunts and Bean knew very well what was going on and it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to give anything away. Less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. But Mr Fox was too clever for them. He always approached a farm with the wind blowing in his face and this meant that if any man were lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr Fox's nose from far away. Thus, if Mr Bogus was hiding behind his chicken house number one, Mr Fox would smell him out from 50 yards off and quickly change direction, heading for chicken house number four at the other end of the farm. Dang and blast that lousy beast, cried Bogus. I'd like to rip his guts out, said Boots. He must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Bogus, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Bean picked his nose delicately with a long finger. I have a plan, he said. You've never had a decent plan yet, said Boots. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night we will all hide just outside the hole where the fox lives. We will wait there until he comes out. Then, bang! Bang, bang, bang. Very clever, said Boots, but first we shall have to find the hole. My dear Boots, I've already found it, said Crafty Bean. It's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. So everyone, that is the end of chapter two. What did you all think of that? Now we know a little bit more information about the story and we found out that the farmers actually know where Mr Fox and his family live. What do you think is going to happen next? Can you make some predictions about what you think might happen in chapter three? Keep using clues from the text to make your predictions. And remember, who is this? It's Fantastic Mr. Fox. Do you think Fantastic Mr. Fox is going to let three farmers invade his home? What do you think will happen next? Now that we have finished reading chapter two, we're going to move on to the task that I've created for you this week. And that's all about how to draw like Quentin Blake. So as you know, Quentin Blake is the illustrator for many Roald Dahl stories and he is very, very famous, isn't he? So you can see that there's three pictures on the screen. One is from The Twits, George's Marvelous Medicine and of course, Fantastic Mr. Fox. 
So our learning intentions for today are, we are learning to respond to artwork by recreating illustrations and discussing our thoughts. And that of course is recreating illustrations by Quentin Blake. And we're also learning to give and accept feedback on our own and others' work. So to do that, we need to think about the style of Quentin Blake's drawings and how we've managed to put them in our own illustrations. So when we're giving feedback, we're thinking about how well we've done and how hard we've tried to make our drawings look as much like Quentin Blake's as possible. So here he is. Here's a little picture of Quentin Blake, just in case you didn't know what he looked like. And here is some information on the, the, the very famous illustrator. So Quentin Saxby Blake is a British cartoonist, illustrator and children's book author, most known for his drawings in books written by Roald Dahl. And he has illustrated over 300 books. Can you believe that? That's so many illustrations inside each of those books. His work in Roald Dahl's books made him internationally famous. That means he is famous all over the world for his illustrations. What do you notice about them? What could you say about these illustrations? So Quentin Blake's style is known and defined by its scrappiness. Scrappiness means it's a little bit scribbly. It looks a little bit rushed. Yet at the same time, he manages to include feeling, humour and information in his drawings. Drawing in a rushed way will help you get closer to Blake's style and has the added bonus of allowing you loads of attempts without spending a lot of time on each one. So if you're rushing and doing a bit of scrappy drawing, you might not get it right the first time, but you can try lots and lots of times until you get it right. Quentin Blake says, I do a freewheeling sort of drawing that looks like that looks as though it is done on the spur of the moment. So again, it looks like he's rushed it and he's just thought of it on the top of his head. But even one drawing needs a certain amount of preparation and planning. So he needs to think about his characters and what they're going to look like. And he plans it all out before he actually does his drawings and illustrations. So how to draw like Quentin Blake. So the first tip I have for you is keeping it simple. So there's some examples here on the screen. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see. So here we have some mouth examples and he keeps them really simple. He doesn't have lots and lots of detail here on his drawings, but you can see they're scrappy, they're scribbly, they look rushed, but they still show us how that person looks and how they might be feeling and also adds a little bit of humour in there and information about what that character might look like. If we go up to here, we see some examples of Quentin Blake's eyes drawing, eyes drawings. And you can see that again, they're very simple. They don't have lots of detail. You don't see big eyelashes or lots of detail on the nose, but it's still very, very effective. The old man eyes, you can see the lines under the eyes, which might show some wrinkles. And here we have some noses and you might notice some of these characters. I can see Mr. Twit's nose and he has big nostrils and quite a big nose and a big bushy eyebrow on top of his eyes. So just zoom out again. And the second tip I have for you is of course, be scrappy. So Quentin Blake has explained himself that he starts with the expression of a person and then he keeps going with that until he's got it right. So this man in the drawing here, it says big egg. So maybe that means he's got a big egg head. Small elephant. That could be the description of his nose. And he's got a moustache. And once you have eyes, nose and mouth or beard, then you can scribble the rest of the body. The rest of the body is quite roughly drawn. So remember, start with the facial expression. Be scrappy or scribbly. This is his style. Miss out some of the features, you don't need them all, keep it simple and don't join everything up because it's supposed to look a bit scribbly and a bit rushed. So now it's your turn, primary two, three. So take out the template you've got in your home learning packs and have a go at drawing Fantastic Mr Fox in the style of Quentin Blake. You can pause this video if you want to have a look at him, um, Mr. Mr Fox on the screen to give you a little bit of help with drawing him. So once you've finished it, Take a photo, post it in the marking tree and don't forget to give a bit of feedback on your classmates work. So write a comment under some of the work that is posted 
and give a comment about how your classmate has managed to draw like Quentin Blake. So you might say something like, well done, I can see that you've used a scrappy technique just like Quentin Blake. Or I can see you've remembered not to join everything up just like Quentin Blake. I really can't wait to see all of your drawings and if you want an extra challenge, you could go back to the features that are on this PowerPoint and try and create your own character using some of these ideas. Good luck everyone, see your work on Marking Tray soon.